Alrighty, let's talk about investing in stocks and bonds, equities and debt, of other companies and marking them to market. Where do those unrealized gains or losses go? Do they show up in net income or do they just increase or decrease the equity on our balance sheet? Okay, by way of context, here's a schematic of a typical income statement. It's our sales minus our expenses to give us our net income. This is a kind of a schematic of a balance sheet. On the left-hand side are our assets. And what we said originally was that the historical cost principle provides that when we put something on our balance sheet, when we put a piece of land on there, for example, we put it on at historical cost and never change it. Well, we've already seen some exceptions to that. For example, inventory is on our books at the lower cost or market value, so we'll write that down. We've also seen something called the allowance for doubtful accounts that writes down our accounts receivable. So now we're going to talk about putting financial instruments like stocks and bonds on our books at original cost and then adjusting them to fair value after that. So if we bought some bonds of another company or some stocks of another company and we've designated them as trading securities or available for sale securities, we're going to mark them to market. They're going to be on our balance sheet for what their fair value is. That is not the case for held to maturity instruments. So if we buy a bond and we're just going to hang on to it forever, it stays on our books at net book value. There's also a, another option called the fair value option. So anytime we buy a stock or a bond, we can decide that we're going to record it using the fair value option. We're going to mark it up and down with unrealized gains and losses, and those unrealized gains or losses are always going to appear as part of that income. All right, let's look at some examples. Okay, let's pretend like our company has a control account called Trading Securities. And beneath that are sub-accounts for the debt investments and the stock investments. And on December 1st, we buy some bonds of Yorkville and some stock of Kodak. And we pay $140,000. Then let's pretend December 31st comes along. We look in the Wall Street Journal, we look at Yahoo Finance or whatever it is, and we discover that these Yorkville bonds are now worth $48,000 and this stock is worth $99,000. So the total value in that portfolio is $147,000. We haven't sold anything, but we've got a $7,000 unrealized gain. So we're going to increase the value of that portfolio with a $7,000 debit to another account called Fair Value Adjustment. Let's think of it as a yet another sub-account of our control account called Trading Securities. We don't debit or credit these accounts, debt investments trading or stock investments trading, because we want to remember how much we paid for these guys. So when we do sell them, we know what kind of gain or loss to book. And the only unusual part here is this unrealized gain dash income. This is the notation that our book uses to remind us that if it's a trading security, unrealized gains and losses are part of net income. So on our stylized income statement, that $7,000 will be part of other revenue and gains. And as we know, net income closes into retained earnings. So even though we didn't sell these stocks and bonds, we still book a gain or a loss even though it's unrealized because it's a trading security. We told the world we're smart and we can buy and sell these things and make money. So I think of it as we have to put our money where our mouth is. So when it goes up or down in value, we book those unrealized gains or losses as part of net income. Okay, let's change up the facts a little bit. It's December 1st and we buy some uh, Campbell Soup bonds. We pay $93,537 for them. And we buy some stock of the Hershey Company. We pay $200,000 for them. So again, think that we have, if you would, a control account called Available for Sale Securities, and beneath that a sub-account called Debt Investments, and beneath that a sub-account sub called Stock Investments. And remember, trading securities, we told the world we're smart, we can buy and sell these things and make money in the short run. Available for sale, we're saying we're not going to trade these things actively. We had some extra cash laying around. We got tired of earning one half of 1% on our bank account, so we're investing in stocks and bonds of other companies. So December 31st rolls around and we look at the Wall Street Journal, we look at Yahoo Finance, wherever, and we discover that now these bonds up here are worth $103,600 and this stock has gone down to $180,400. So we have a total value of $284,000.
So it's gone down by 9,537. So what we'll do is we'll book an unrealized gain or loss slash equity. This is our book's way of saying that this unrealized gain or loss is not part of net income. And we'll reduce our portfolio by crediting that fair value adjustment account. Again, we won't credit or debit these accounts. We'll keep them separate so we remember exactly what we paid for these guys. Well, what does this unrealized loss slash equity really mean? Well, our book is saying if we have a credit over here that reduces the value of this uh, available for sale portfolio by 9537 we must have a debit over here that reduces the equity on our balance sheet. And what really happens is that unrealized loss is going to flow through something called other comprehensive income. That's stuff that hasn't happened yet, but it's important enough that we have to talk about it. Things like unexpected or excessive losses or gains in our pension fund assets, things like uh, translation adjustment if we have a foreign subsidiary, or in this case, unrealized gains or losses on available for sale securities. They don't show up as part of net income, but we do record them by increasing or decreasing our equity in the business. And what's going to happen is other comprehensive income is going to close into this account called accumulated other comprehensive income. And our beginning accounting textbook shortcuts that whole thing by talking about uh, unrealized gain or loss equity 9537. So remember, equity is on the right-hand side of the balance sheet. It increases with, de with credits and decreases with debits, and that's what's happening here.